DJ Ferris. Chicago, nigga. It's the real one. He back. Only one is pulling shit. Fuck up. Let's get a sports talk. Dalvin Cook is one of the best players in the NFL last year, ranking only behind McCaffrey for most yards per scrimmage per game. McCaffrey and every name on the screen other than Cook will rank in the top ten in terms of highest paid backs this year. Cook's upcoming salary will rank him 49th, and so I want to bring Diana Russini, our insider extraordinaire, into this conversation with Booger and Cliff. And Diana, I will start with you. What are you hearing from, from inside about how the running back market, we can, we can look at this specifically with regards to Cook or sort of in a bigger sense, how the running back market is right now perceived? Well, let's start with just Dalvin Cook in general, right? So this has actually been no secret that he's going to hold out here. He did attend a couple of those virtual meetings, but there's been whispers going on uh, going back to the fall that he wasn't going to participate here in these practices until he got a new deal. And he's looking at around $13 million. That's like a David Johnson-type contract deal there. Now, in terms of his leverage, remember, Dalvin Cook hasn't played a 16-game season yet. He's dealt with some injuries. So in terms of the leverage here, it's not really working in his favor. And let's just take a step back and look at this running back market from a whole because there's a lot of running backs right now looking for... Because what he done on the field. He is a safety blanket for Cousins. If you didn't have a running back that wasn't doing anything on the field, then you could come out and say this. Only thing you could have on him, the injuries. Other than that, he is a big part of the Vikings offense. Because he opened up everything for Kirk Cousins. Because every day now, you got the defense focused on in the backfield. And every day behind them is opening up because you have to focus on if they go hand the football off to Dalvin Cook. He is a crucial part of that offense. Now, he is the main guy of that offense. Besides stealing. Like, he is a big part of it. Everything that he do for Kirk Cousins and he take that load off of Kirk Cousins to make everything easy on his part. He don't have to put it in the air so much because the run game not producing. But the run game he is producing. That's why he have leverage to get extension from Minnesota. Now they let him walk out that door, trust me, people going to be knocking. And want to get Cooks in there because he can make a big impact on other teams new deals here and greeny whenever i talk to gms about how they feel about the state of the running back market at this point their health and their usage is always brought up guys want to get paid for what they've done not for what they can do and that's really the issue you run into here at, at this point so uh in terms of going forward here the, the days of ezekiel elliott which we saw that mega deal christian mccaffrey who plays every down you can look at that and say they are worth that money. But so many general managers in the league now feel that they can really get these running backs in the draft in those third, fourth, fifth rounds here. Now, Minnesota does have the money to pay him. It's just whether or not they think he's worth it. Right. I mean, basically, they, they draft these guys, they use them up in a couple of years, and then tell them they can't pay them because they have too much tread off of their tires. A booger, I'll just ask you directly. We've seen some of the moves that have been made. We've seen how they have turned out. Do you believe the Vikings, in this case, should go in big the way the Cowboys did and pay all this money to a running back? Well, I, I think they have to, Greeny. If you look at how valuable he is to their team and, and you understand what Mike Zimmer wants to do, let's not forget the backstory. Mike Zimmer fired. Mike Zimmer is a man that coach. He's an old school coach. He loved running the football majority of the off, um, majority of the games. He liked to hand it off to Cooks. That's why I say he's a big part. Yes, you can go after the injuries, but he is a big focal point for Minnesota. If he wasn't producing on the field, they have no leverage. They have no right to hold out. But he's producing. Every game you see on TV, Dalvin Cook breaking for like 20, 30 yards. 
majority of the games. And that's why he has so much leverage to hold out because he's having to age a big part of this offense. And you see him producing when you watch it, a Minnesota game. Now, if he want to take care of business on the field, then you come out and say, yes, you have no leverage. We're not going to stand you until you produce. And he had produced when he's healthy. John DeFilippo, because he wasn't running the football enough, you bring in Kevin Stefanski to make this offense a more run-based offense. They want to run the football. Zimmer is a defensive coach. He wants to protect his defense. That's how they want to play football. So if you're going to play that way, you got to have a running back. And he's the most valuable asset to this offense outside of Kirk Cousins. So with all that being said, they have to pay him. Now, the key will be the structure. Are you going to structure it in a way where he gets some money in the early years? That way you don't become hampered in the later years. If they can do that, I think it can be a win-win. But make no mistake about it. Other than Kirk Cousins, he's the most valuable person on that football team. So, Greeny, whether they want to or not, they're kind of really going to have to take care of the running back. An interesting thought. Uh, Cliff, let me look at some of the recent running backs that have been paid big money over the last couple of years. David Johnson got huge money with the Cardinals. He's not in Arizona anymore. Todd Gurley, big money with the Rams. He's not there anymore. The Jets and Le'Veon Bell, he's obviously no longer in Pittsburgh. We saw how that played out. Then the Cowboys with Zeke, they paid him on the, all that money. They didn't make the playoffs. So I'll ask you the same question. Does it make sense, the way the game of football is structured and played in 2020, to give all of that money to a running back? I think it does, and this is why I think it makes sense for them to give Cook, but not only having a solid run game and how important it is, right? You look at the, the, the Vikings and how much they ran the ball last year. 49% of their, their offense was ra running the ball, meaning Cook plays a major, major part of that. See what I mean? That's why I say he have leverage. He is majority of that offense. They ran the football 49% of the – Plays that you see them running on Sundays, Mondays, Thursdays. You see them running the football with David Cook. He's a big part of that offense. That's why it's leverage on his side. Because you have a running back that's producing. You can't go out to Le'Veon Bell's in a different offense. Of course, he was going to struggle. The offense ain't know how to um, protect Le'Veon Bell. They ain't know what he like to do. They ain't know that he like to sit and set up everything. It's something they had to get used to. The Jets ain't know how to utilize him, but this season they probably know how. But Dalvin Cook is a big part of Minnesota offense. They ran the football a whole lot last season. Dallas, only reason Zeke had an okay year because he set out majority of the season until he got a contract. He probably came into the season out of shape. But Cook is a big part of Minnesota offense because Zimmer loved to run in the football. Right? And then if you look at all the playoff teams, all of the playoff teams, seven out of the ten playoff teams had top running games uh, per, per game, right? So I think in December, when it's time to make a playoff run, you need a running game. And the Vikings have a really special player in Cook, so you have to pay that man on top of the fact that you need to pay that man so you can make a run in the playoffs and actually try to win a championship. Yeah, I agree. He's the most important part. To me, he's the most important piece of that offense, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to do it. Diana, let's go through this with us a little more here. Well, I think the biggest concern I hear is everyone saw what happened with the Rams with Todd Gurley. Look at the last few seasons here where, you know, I covered tons of Rams games. And, and, and Greeny, I must have asked. It's a difference. It's Todd Gurley was featured in their offense of them running the football mostly. The Rams was an offense that put in the air a lot. That's why you see Ty Gurley decrease from the Rams. He wasn't a focal point of their offense. Yeah, they threw it to him out of the backfield, but they weren't handing the football off to him like Minnesota handed the football to Cook. It's a difference when you feature in the offense mostly.
Dalvin Cook is featured in that offense majority of the plays. The Rams ain't handing for a lot of Tyler Gurley like that. They was an offense that's aired out. They wasn't a running team. They ain't mix it up with majority. It's a difference. That's why Ty Gurley numbers decreased because he wasn't the focal point. It was golf throwing the football. He was the most majority of their offense. Minnesota is a run team that run the football and then lead up to throwing the football. Rams was an aired out team. They wasn't focused on getting Ty Gurley to the football. That's why you see him ghost in their offense. That's why you ain't seen. You see him throw, they throwing a football to him, but not handing out to him. They was a throwing team. On McVay over the last season or two, over a dozen times, what is wrong with Todd Gurley? Why aren't you using him? I've asked Todd Gurley himself. So to, to have this gigantic question mark over a guy that they paid so much money, and look how they, they really put themselves in such a tough position with their cap. Teams are looking at that and going, do we want to put ourselves in that position? This also being said, good news for the Atlanta Falcons, who we know signed Todd Gurley, Adam Schefter reporting. He was finally able to take his physical over the last few days, and he passed. So that is a good positive step forward there for Todd Gurley. But again, there is a very dark cloud over running backs because so many teams saw what happened with Gurley, who was a magnetic player just a few years ago. There's a bunch of guys lined up behind this too, right, Booger? You got your Saquon Barkley and a lot of these other young running backs who will be right behind these guys in line. Because if you're a running back, you got to get your money as soon as you possibly can. Without a doubt, and, and, and great to your point, I, I don't think we can become afraid. Just because something happened with Todd Gurley, Ezekiel Elliott came out, even though the Cowboys' offense wasn't dynamic with the run game, they had a top-flight offense, but the run game wasn't what it was in the past. You can't be scared, okay? Uh, Dalvin Cook has shown you over the last couple of years, yes, he's missed a couple games, but he's still by far the most productive run-pass option that they've had in an offense, so... Let's not become afraid just because it happened one time with Ty Gurley. Dalvin Cook has earned his money, and I think it's up to Minnesota and the Spielman, uh, uh, Spielman up there to make sure he has an opportunity to get his money and he can impact the offense the way he has the last couple years. Thank you for watching ESPN. I'm